What's up guys, it's Eric from Rare Candy and welcome back to another deck and battle here on PTCGO and this time we're going to be taking a look at Galissapod GX Garbiter. This is going to be the big sleeper deck that uh, you know kind of creeped into worlds, uh, you know a big group of the Japanese players that attended uh, brought this version to the world championship. So we're going to be taking a look at this deck and kind of adapting it for the post rotation format. So some of these cards uh, were in their list but again uh, some weren't. I had to kind of make things work for this new format that we're about to enter. But yeah, so this is a version that I, prior to Worlds, I hadn't seen too many people really discuss. You know, there's been the Galissapod Zorark version, which we've covered a bit, uh, the Evolutions version, the Lorantis one, but no one was really talking about Garbit or so. Uh, definitely interesting how this deck emerged. So let's take a look at it and see why the Japanese uh, did so well with this at Worlds. So Glisspod GX is the main attacker, of course. Uh, 210 hit points, fire weakness, 3 retreat. Um, but it's mainly going to be used for its first attack, first impression, for just one grass energy. You do 90 damage, uh, plus 30 more. I'm sorry, 30 damage, plus 90 more, if this Pokemon was on your bench and became your active Pokemon in the same turn. So 120 for one energy is really good. Uh, 150 if you have a choice band and play as well. So it's just a really good... Uh, energy to damage uh, ratio. So he's going to be kind of our main attacker, especially in the early game too. Uh, but it also has some other decent attacks. We have Armor Press for a Grass and DCE, does 100 damage. And then during your opponent's next turn, Glisspod will take 20 less damage from your opponent's attacks. And then its GX move for the same attack cost does 150 damage. And then you switch this Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. So kind of cool, has some synergy with the first attack as well. But yeah, like I said, we can use these other attacks, but the attack first impression is going to be the main attack we are most concerned with. So next up, we, it is worth knowing we are playing the uh, Wimpod from Burning Shadows just because it has this Wimp Out ability. It lets Wimpod retreat on the first turn. So if you start with it, you can you know retreat it and promote something else. Are playing one type of Coco, uh, mainly for its flying flip attack. Uh, for just one double Carlos energy, it does 20 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon. Uh, so this is kind of cool because if you notice Galissapod, if you put a Choice Band on it, it can do about 150 damage with its first attack, and sometimes that'll be a little bit short of taking knockouts. Um, so Tapu Coco can be nice because if you get a turn or two to spread at some point, you can kind of make the math work out a little bit better as far as taking knockouts. But also, another reason this card is good is because it has free retreat. And it's especially important because if we play something like a Guzma, uh, we need to promote something that has a free retreat cost. So it also serves a purpose in that way too. Then the other half of the deck, I guess you'd say, is going to be a 4-4 uh, Garbiter line. We are playing a split between uh, each Garbiter. So we're playing two of the Garbitoxin Garbiter. Uh, so whenever it has a tool card attached to it, each Pokemon in play hand and discard has no abilities. You guys should be familiar with this. And then we are also playing two copies of the Trash Lange Garbiter uh, for, like I said, it's Trash Lange Attack. For one Psychic Energy, does 20 damage times the number of item cards in your opponent's discard pile. So uh, this has been a pretty dominant card for many months now. You guys should be plenty familiar with it and uh, understand why it's good at this point. Uh, we are playing the 2-2 split mainly, I think, just because I saw one of the players running a 2-2 split. So I was trying to be faithful to, you know, the list that I saw them playing. But, you know, who knows? Maybe you can switch it up and do three of the Trash Lanch and one of the Garbage Toxin. But like I said, for now, we're just going to do the even split of both of them. And then the, to round out the Pokemon line, we're playing three Tapu Lele GX, uh, mainly for its Wonder Tag ability to search our deck for a supporter, but then also the attack energy drive is still a solid backup attack if we want to. So for a DCE, 20 damage times the number of energy on both active Pokemon. So going into our trainer cards, we'll start with the supporters, and it is worth noting, uh, I'm still personally playing around with what the ideal supporter counts are going to be in post-rotation, so I might even add or subtract certain things, but this should be a decent little starting point uh, at the very least. So we're playing four Professor Siskamore, discard your hand, draw seven. Uh, four copies of N. These are kind of our, our staple draw supporters. Now that Verse Seeker is gone, we are going to be just maxing out our counts of each of these. But then we're also playing one Lily as well. So it's another supporter uh, back from the Sun and Moon set. Draw until you have six cards in your hand. 
but if it's your first turn, you get to draw until you have eight cards. So, if you open up with a couple of basic Pokemon, and you don't really need Bridget that badly on the first turn, this can be a good first turn option in place of Bridget. Uh, also, you know, it, it's just a decent little form of draw power uh, in the late game, potentially. Okay, so speaking of Bridget, we are still playing one Bridget. Search your deck for one basic EX or three basic non-EXs and put them onto your bench. So this is going to be our go-to uh, first turn supporter in most cases. So we have three copies of Guzma. Switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with their active. And if you do switch your active Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. So with Lysander being out of the format, we are going to be you know, playing a heavy Guzma count, especially now that Verse Seeker is gone, we're opting to play a third Guzma. You can maybe even debatably go up to a fourth, but I think three is kind of a sweet spot out of the uh, games I've been playing so far for post rotation. Uh, but this is also good too because it will mean that if your Gliss Pot is in the active spot, you can switch it onto the bench and then maybe retreat back into it and use its first impression attack yet again. So definitely a very, very important card in this particular type of deck. And the last part we're playing is two copies of Acerola. Put one of your Pokemon that has any damage counters on it and all cards attached to it into your hand. So this is another way we can get our Golis Pods back into the active spot. Also, you know, it provides a form of healing. If someone has to two-shot our Golis Pods, we can pick them up with Acerola and heal all the damage off. So next up we have, you know, four Ultra Ball, pretty standard. Three choice band, three, uh, four float stone. Uh, I guess one of the more interesting inclusions is one heavy ball. Search your deck for a Pokemon with a three retreat cost or more, reveal it, and put it into your hand. So this is good because Wimpod, uh, Galizapod, and both Garbodors all have a three retreat cost. So heavy ball is going to search out almost everything in this entire deck. And this actually was a card I did see in at least one of the Japanese lists. So it seemed like it has some synergy, so I opted to include it in this version as well. Uh, two Rescue Stretcher, just to uh, give ourselves a little bit of recovery. Uh, two Field Blower, just to get rid of your opponent's tool cards. We also don't play stadiums, so that's another reason why the second copy is pretty good here, just, uh, just so we have a way to counter people's stadiums. Uh, and then I actually don't think I saw anyone play special charge, but most of our energy in this deck is special energy So I felt like this might be warranted. So we're gonna be trying this one out So shuffle two special energy cards from your discard pile into your deck And speaking of energy we we're playing uh, four double colorless energy uh, four rainbow energy and then two grass energy so we're playing the rainbow energies just because we have psychic attackers and grass attackers and it lets us have an option to you know use either one and it's also kind of cool because with rainbow energy you actually take one damage counter whenever you attach it to that pokemon and that might seem kind of annoying but it's actually a good thing because it means that we can always use our acerolas um, even if our opponent hasn't uh you know uh, attack this yet so for whatever reason if we want to be able to get something out of the active spot with acerola or maybe even just pick it up if it's a bench sitting liability uh, we can maybe pick it up with acerola at some point so guys that is going to be the list we're going to try out for the post rotation format um, i don't believe all of the japanese players played the same list because i did see some that ran things like magirna ex uh, I saw one that ran Drampa GX, so like I said, this isn't based on exactly one particular version of the deck that the Japanese brought. I kind of just looked at the ones I saw on stream and kind of tried to make something that fit the post-rotation format based on what I saw. So yeah, definitely a very interesting deck. Glad to see uh, you know some interesting decks popping out of worlds. But let's head over to the battle portion of the video and see how this deck looks in action. Alright guys, so we have ourselves a game here, we're just going to call the coin flip, which we do lose, which is slightly annoying, but nevertheless, we'll, uh, we'll make it work. Here opponent has a Trevenant deck, it looks like, and like a Zygarde deck box, so uh, not really giving us too, inf too much information, so maybe this is some sort of Trevenant deck? Not sure, we'll see. Here we actually have a decent little opening though, and our opponent flips over their own Wimpod, so... <laughs> Uh, maybe we'll have a little bit of a, a mirror match here. So 
our opponent is going to ultra ball away some stuff. So you have Kukui hitting the discard. And it is worth noting too, at the time of filming, uh, the post rotation format hasn't officially kicked in on PTCGO. So there is a good chance that we will be playing against decks that still run Versus Seeker and stuff like that. So there's something to keep in mind. So your opponent is, it looks like they are playing the Zorak version of Gullispot. So we'll have to see how that does against the Garbodor version that we have. And okay, so this hand is workable. It's a shame we can't evolve yet, but uh, let's see what we're gonna do here. So we're gonna get down another Wimpod, it looks like. Uh, can attach a DCE, so let's, yeah, let's put it on the bench one just because this uh, Jirachi could take it off with its Stardust attack, and we wanna kinda keep our special energy safe if possible. Here we're gonna tap a Leiwei GX, and, you know, normally I would like to bridge it here, but since we don't have a draw supporter for next turn, I think Lily actually might be the stronger play. Uh, we already have a couple of basic Pokemon down anyway, so I think this will be just fine. And here, let's play down our hand a little bit. Let's uh, throw down this Choice Band, put it on our Wimpod. Um, we can do that or the Trubbish, but I'm going to favor the Wimpod here. Then we're going to use this uh, Field Blower, getting rid of that Float Stone on Zerua. And here we're going to use Lily to draw until we have eight. So, actually not a bad hand for next turn. We have a couple Garboders, we have a Lele, uh, we have another Field Blower if they get down the whole Zorark Floatstone combo. So I think we're actually in a pretty good spot, so definitely a good first turn. Okay, our opponent is going to play their own Tapu Lele GX. That makes me think they're going to go for an N, since I did draw until I had 8 cards. And yep, that looks like what they're going to be favoring. That definitely seems like a good play on our opponent's part. So they're definitely having a pretty decent setup as well. Okay, they're going to grab a Galispod GX. They just need to find a way to retreat this Jirachi, and then they will be able to use First Impression. And this hand is much worse. <laughs> so definitely a very effective end on our opponent's part. <sighs> so this is uh, slightly annoying. So what do we do here? That's the question. We can't really attack with anything. So I think what I'm gonna do is just bridge it for this Tapu Coco. Let's attach this Floatstone and then let's just retreat into the Coco and maybe just like a wall with this for a turn or so. I want to kind of keep our wimp pods and you know basic evolution pieces safe uh, especially while our hand is dead so because I don't know how many turns we're gonna have to wait at, wait this out but here our opponent has an end they are gonna refresh our hand for us and who that was a close one but <laughs> that was a pretty terrible hand so okay yeah this one's definitely much much more workable. Our opponent's gonna use the stand in ability with uh, their Zorak and use mind jack for a good bit of damage. Uh, but luckily we have this Wimpod with a Floatstone on it, so if we can manage to get a Grass Energy and a Gullispod... Okay, so we have Gullispod, that's good. Uh, we will be able to take a Knockout with First Impression. So here we'll evolve into one of our Garboders. Let's see, we have, we have a Choice Band, we can throw that down. And I don't think we need three Gullispods here, so... Or three Wimpods, so... Maybe we can just Sycamore, or we could play the N. Um, I kind of like going for the Sycamore, because I think we really need the energy this turn. And Okay, so we do hit the Rainbow Energy. That'll be good. And we actually have um, some options. Could go for a Garbutter, but I'd have to discard. I, there's nothing really I want to discard with the Ultra Ball to get out Garbutter this turn. So I might just save the Ultra Ball just to give us the option of grabbing a Lele to get like a different supporter or something like that too. But here we're gonna do uh, first impression, or I'm sorry, we, we, we did armor press to do 100 and that way our opponent will uh, do 20 less damage to us next turn. But here our opponent is going to promote that Jirachi which could be a thorn in our side since it does strip uh, special energies away. So let's have to see how our opponent's gonna respond here but if I had to guess we will probably see Oh, okay, so our opponent did attach to Gliss Pots. That means we won't see a Stardust. I'm perfectly fine with that. They just need a Floatstone now to attack us. Okay, they get a Field Blower. Slightly annoying. So 
let's see, they get rid of the Choice Band and Float Stone from the bench. Kind of annoying that they got rid of the Float Stone because we do need that to effectively make use of Glisspod's first attack. Okay, and our opponent did manage to get the Float Stone for themselves, so they're doing okay too. And they're going to use their GX move to do 130 to us since we used Armor Press. And okay, so this hand's actually pretty workable. Only thing I'm a little sad about, we don't have a way to retreat this Galissapod. Which means we're in a difficult situation because we can use Armor Press to take a knockout, but then this Galissapod gets knocked out. Um, so... We... <laughs> it really is unfortunate, but we might have to cross and cut GX here. Um, and that... I really don't want to do that because I want to save that to take out a Tapu Lele in one hit, but... Uh, we might have to do it. I don't think it's worth losing the Pod over. Because uh, we could also manually retreat as well. But then we lose three uh, energy. So I don't know here. So I guess we're just going to opt to go for the old cross and cut it looks like. Um, do have a, a field blower. We're going to burn that I think. Yeah let's get rid of the float stone on that Jirachi. Um, you know, I'd prefer to be able to get rid of two tools at a time, but it's really important just ensuring your opponent does not have a Pokemon with free retreat to easily promote their Goalist Pods every turn. Here I'm just going to use Cross and Cut GX, and I think I'm just going to promote this Trubbish. So if this thing gets knocked out, it's not the end of the world. Here we grab a Sycamore off the prize, that's good. In case we get in, that's one more uh, draw supporter going into our deck potentially. So our opponent is opting to power up their other Glisspot, and they're going to use Rescue Stretcher, just getting back a couple of evolution pieces there. And just going to see an armor press, that's fine with me. I was really just hoping they did not have a, uh, a Guzma that turn. So here, what are we going to do? Um, since none of these Pokemon have free retreat, that does create a little bit of a situation. We could get greedy and promote like a Tapu Lele GX, for example. So let's uh, let's do this because I think what we can do is we can attach this. Oh, okay. So we draw right into the floats in that. That'll be good. But the only problem is we don't have a rainbow energy down on our undamaged ghost pod. But here, I think what we'll do is we can attach. Yeah, we can attach here. I like this because we can attach double Carlos energy and we'll do 200 damage. <clears throat> Uh, this turn with our energy drive GX, or not a GX, but with our energy drive, and the next turn we can finish knocking out this Gliss Pod. So that's that's cool. I actually kind of like this play. This will save our Gliss Pod that's on the bench. <clears throat> and I kind of want to put down Tapu Coco, so maybe we can do that. But I don't know. Let's leave the bench space open just in case we need to grab a Tapu Lele. Oh, and we only did 80, so my, my bad, guys. Um, yeah, I forgot our opponent used armor press last turn, not uh, first impression. So that actually, ugh, that's going to make the math for this a little bit worse. Because uh, now a first impression with my undamaged uh, Gliss Pod is only going to do 120, which makes it 10 shorts. So that's actually kind of a misplay on my part, I hate to say. Um, nevertheless, we're still in okay spot though overall so let's see we're gonna ultra let's get rid of this wind pot i don't think we need that we might not need the garboder i think that's kind of what i'm favoring getting rid of here uh we could get rid of the n if we we're going for a draw supporter but i think garboder is the better play here so let's grab a tapulele we can get a an acerola to pick up our, our glissapod gx or on the flip side we could grab a guzma to potentially take a knockout with the the damaged um, Ghost Pod GX as well. So yeah this is a <laughs> this is my fault for miscalculating the damage since I'm probably gonna be forced to take a knockout using this damaged Glissapod, but that means our opponent is going to be able to get a return knockout as well. So here, let's do this though. Uh, I think I, this is my only real option. Well, actually, I could attach the Rainbow Energy to Garboder and take a knockout that way, too. So maybe hmm, that might actually be a better play. But either way, I definitely want to take a knockout 
on this uh, Gliss Pod. I forget how many items are in our opponent's discard pile. That is a factor as well. But here, it looks like we're just going to do uh, first impression. That'll be 150 damage. Uh, knocking out this Gliss Pod. So even though our own Gliss Pod is probably going to go down, we've taken, I think, three prizes with it so far. So... Or actually, no, four, I guess. Yeah, because I don't think we took a knockout with anything else. So it's it's kind of gone the distance for us, if nothing else. Okay, so what is our opponent going to do here? They could use Stardust and keep stripping us of energy. They could retreat into Galissapod. So we'll have to see what our opponent is going to opt to do here. But I think they're still in an okay spot as well. And here our opponent just concedes, so I guess they just didn't have much to work with there. Um, but yeah, I mean, even still, you can kind of see how this deck actually looks in action. Uh, it seems kind of cool. Uh, I mean, I never would have thought Garbit or Glissapod would have been the, you know, the dominant Glissapod version that came out of Worlds, but here we are. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this look at Glissapod Garbit. But yeah, as usual, feel free to like and subscribe, and don't forget to support us either on our online store, RareCandyTCG.com, or on our Patreon, slash RareCandyTCG. It'd mean a lot to us. But with that, I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you for the next one.